Hi, I'm Josh, inventor of the Bottoms Up Beer Dispenser, and I'm here today to talk about some of the reasons you might not be getting ideal keg yield with your Bottoms Up Beer Dispenser. Don't know what the keg yield should be? Well, check out this awesome video we made on how many beers you get out of a keg with a Bottoms Up Beer Dispenser. It's pretty amazing. One of the most common reasons for beer waste on a Bottoms Up Beer Dispenser is a misprogrammed size in either under or over. The reason an underpour can counterintuitively cause waste is that the beer stops short and then when the bartender comes to get their beer, they will push and hold the start stop button, filling the glass past the full mark spilling it. The next one is overpouring, and that's pretty self-explanatory. It, it just means that the dispenser is pouring more beer into the glass than the glass can hold. Uh, some reasons for this are changing types of beer. For instance, a Coors Light is lighter, and it's going to flow differently through our flow meters than, say, a heavy stout. The easiest way to address this is to just simply reprogram a size. Another reason may be a line cleaning. Let's say the lines haven't been cleaned in a while and some gunk is getting built up on the inner workings of the flow meter. Lines get cleaned, that gunk goes away, the flow meter is just going to spin a little bit differently. Again, best practice is to just reprogram the size. Reprogramming the size with the Bottoms Up Beer Dispenser is very, very easy. We have instructions that you can find here on this link or on every single dispenser on the lower left hand corner where the touch pads are, you can find written instructions on how to reprogram a size. It's very, very simple. Another thing to be on the lookout for is beers that are losing their beer after they have stopped filling. And this can happen for a number of reasons. If you find yourself coming back to a glass that isn't full and you know the size is programmed properly, one of the first things you want to look for is a loose cup coupler. That's really easy to check just by grabbing the cup coupler and wiggling it. If it wiggles, just reach down and tighten the black nut, securing it more tightly to the filling head. If you reach down and it feels tight, yet it still wiggles, it's likely cross-threaded. Go ahead and take it loose, and then when you go to put it back on, press down on it, turn it counterclockwise until you kind of hear it click. That's the first parts of the thread seating in the other threads. You can then turn it clockwise, and it will tighten down. The next most common is a twisted cup coupler O-ring. These are square cut O-rings found on the top of the cup coupler, and it most often happens when an O-ring has been replaced. It is actually better to leave an O-ring out of a cup coupler than replace it twisted. To fix the problem, remove the cup coupler from the dispenser, then remove the twisted O-ring. You're gonna then take the cup coupler and press down with your thumbs on the center post of the nozzle. This is gonna make it flush with the top of the cup coupler and make it easier to replace the O-ring. You're gonna wanna then wet the O-ring and the cup coupler and very carefully push it into the groove, stretching it as you push it in so it doesn't twist. After you replace the O-ring, you're going to want to check and make sure that it's sealing well. You can do this by putting the cup coupler assembly back on the dispenser and then taking a bottoms up glass full of water, placing it on the dispenser and letting it sit there for a little bit to see if it maintains its volume. Another less common one is a missing case nut O-ring. You can see it here simply just replace it. It's very easy. Last but not least, this can also be caused by a damaged ring in a bottoms up vessel. This can be caused by several things. Uh, one normal wear and tear on a vessel. They do have a lifespan. It takes a while, but it happens. Another thing could be aggressively setting the vessels down on the dispensers where the center, centering post of the valve will damage the bottom of the ring. Another reason could be putting silverware into a glass, damaging the top ring. And another thing that we have found is that some dishwashing brushes have a post in the middle that will damage the ring. If you have a vessel that is suspect, simply put a magnet in it, fill it with water, and set it on the bottoms up valve with it in manual and see if it leaks. Another area spillage could be coming from is in the picking up of the bottoms up vessels. You want to pick them up in a quick, smooth fashion. Don't be afraid of it. The more you hesitate when you pick it up, the more beer will spill out as the glass is transitioning from the open position to the closed position. On long draw systems with empty keg detectors or EKDs, another place loss can be happening is when bleeding off the empty keg detector. If you do not make sure to get the on-off valve fully into the off position, or if you bleed it off too long, this could cause excessive waste. You just need to bleed it off long enough to get the float into the up position. A less common reason for unnoticed spillage is a leaky plunger head o-ring. Now the reason I say less common for unnoticed spillage is because it's usually very noticeable 
whether or not it's happening because it'll cause all kinds of other issues, whether it be foaming or uh, foam coming out of a valve that isn't pouring. It's usually very noticeable, it's very apparent. But what you want to look for is beer coming out of the valve when the valve is not open. This can be caused by the plunger head o-ring wearing out, being installed improperly, i.e. twisting it when you put it on, or a faulty diaphragm. The diaphragms usually go bad due to lack of maintenance and lack of regular line cleaning on the dispenser. The worst being when putting a dispenser away without cleaning the lines first. Another rare one occurs when you're using some of our taller vessels, such as the 32 ounce cups or our pitchers. If the dispenser is too far out of level, as the vessel gets full, it will start to tip, causing beer to leak out the bottom of it as it is filling. To fix this, simply level the dispenser. For our taller vessels, you don't want the drain pan to have more than two degrees of pitch. If you're using analytic systems such as Bev & Co, and your numbers are still off after you're watching perfect beer after perfect beer fill up, something to take into consideration is the plug number used for the ounces of the beer fill in that system. For example, this is a pint and this is a pint. This is our Triton pint. It is 17 ounces to the rim. This is our glass pint. It is 16 ounces to the rim. We recommend using a two rim number in those systems. So this you plug in 17, this you plug in 16. Think about if you had 16 for this one. That's one ounce. Over 100 beers, you'd be 100 ounces off. All right, so we've worked through the vast majority of anything that could go wrong with the bottoms up beer dispenser that would cause spillage outside of a foaming issue. If you have a foaming issue, or if you have any issue for that matter, on the left-hand corner of every dispenser is our phone number, and we're there for you day and night. Give it a call, and we will help you. Uh, oh, one last thing that's really taken into consideration is comped beers and theft. If you've worked through all of these things and it's pouring perfect beer after perfect beer and your numbers are still off, that is a place you might want to take a look. Thanks for your time and I hope this was helpful.